series switch. Yeah, it's gonna be Kingwin. Let's find the Kingwin game. Hold on, because yeah, we we missed Wait, it. Wait, uh, so we're casting through Dota TV? Yes, we are. Professional, right here. Oh, um, yeah, okay. Yeah, we you did miss it? it. Yeah, I see it. I see it. So, don't worry, guys. You know we're gonna have we're gonna have some good old Dota TV casting coming. Are uh, we allowed like a one minute break? Um, I'm not too sure. Do you need a, Do you need a potty break? Oh, can I? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, be right back. Until tilt. Until you need to cool down. All right. So what's up, guys? Looks like we we don't even get the break. And in this case, we are just going straight into Kingwin versus LGB. Five seconds remaining. Yep, just let me change the stream title and... Okay, you guys are gonna have to forgive me because my... I don't really know too much about... The Hold on. Yeah, I need to inform the, the admin as well to wait for us in the next lobby. All right, so <laughs> the the All right, so here we are game this will be interesting. I think they probably will remake the lobby since the only Lisa is Lisa Ash. You know, he's drafting alone All right, I'm back Okay, um, I'm not sure what's happening. I'm just going to try and figure it out in the lobby. But I think that they may be remaking it. Because th I'm seeing this wrong, right? Kingwin only has one player drafted. Maybe they're doing the draft now. Yeah, and then, then they'll remake the lobby after. Maybe. That's something I used to do in scrims. But I've never seen it done in officials. You know, if like you, your draft was ready but you didn't have a team. Then you just do the draft while you wait for people to get there. Turn to be. Oh, actually, hold on. Looks like the lobby is remade. So, okay, let's just skip Dota TV. Let's bounce. Don't worry, guys. Okay, so we're gonna take a quick break. See you guys in a GIF. Let's join the lobby first. Uh, do you have the password yet, PQ? No, you didn't send me. Okay. okay. If, unless it's if it's changed. Hold on, let me check. Okay. Let me check. Uh, yes, that's the pass. Don't worry, guys. I do not see the lobby either. Seconds. Alright, so hold on in a bit. We'll be seeing you guys. Don't go anywhere. You can enjoy the radio podcast for now, you know.
Yeah, so I can swap it. All pit. Behold the horn of madness. Sven stands ready. Templar assassin. Bad rider! Silencer. Hello and welcome to our first EU best of three series on the ESL Hamburg EU qualifier here on the Joint Twitter Blue stream. I'm Hades and this is PQMC. I'm casting all the way from Singapore and PQ is casting all the way from... Britain. Britain. Which part? England. England. Alright, alright. So... Okay, this is my there first. There's no draft. Yeah, there's no draft. It's already been drafted. This is the remade lobby. So, Kingwin, this is their new squad, if I'm not mistaken. And this will be my first time watching these guys in action. Not to mention, this is also pretty much my first actual time casting in you know an EU game. So, hope you guys are good to me. So, pardon that I don't really know too much about these teams. But okay, can you tell me more about both these teams, PQ? Okay, well, as far as the Radin team go, it is a random stack of pub players. I know two of them. The other three, I do not know, but they're probably all somewhere around 7k players. So, we'll see how they compare on like a real game as opposed to pubs. And the other squad is, I'm not 100% sure, but I think most of them are Polish or somewhere around there. They used to be... Uh, ATN. I actually played against these guys a long, long time ago. Uh, three or four of them. Okay. I don't know the Magnus guy, but they've been together for a long time and they've done a few role swaps here and there, but overall, I'd say they're a pretty solid tier two team. Like, they might upset and they also might lose to teams that are worse than them. You know, kind of typical like Power Rangers style from like two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where they would sit, I'd say. I haven't seen them play recently. But, you know, with their draft, it looks very non-meta. You know, these heroes don't get seen too much at the moment. Alright, so Bonnie went a piece, and... This ought to be a bit interesting. I mean, we see the first pick Spirit Breaker, at least from the draft, which we did manage to catch back in, you know, before the lobby was remade. So this, this will be quite interesting to me, because I, you don't see too much, like, Spirit Breaker support in C. Is, is this, like, a common thing in EU? Like... What do you what do you think about the draft so far? Do you favor King Gwyn more, or do you would you go for LGB? Oh, I kind of like the radiant draft, but Magnus Troll and OD make it very hard to close out games and mm -hmm. to use your leads. So uh, I think they have a pretty easy time once they get online. It's just that they have like a, a lack of early game. You know, a Nyx and Silence's support to you is very very weak in terms of stuns and. And to be honest, I know very little about like how the Radiant team are actually going to play, so I'd probably favor the team I've got some experience with and know that they can play Dota. Mm -hmm. And I can see why. Like, I mean, for these guys to be picked up by King Gwyn as well, this, I mean, it has to say something, right? They're not going to pick up just any random team. So maybe... Uh, they've been together for a long time, yeah, so it's... probably like... Okay, well, Value access. of friendship kind of argument, you know. He goes out the answers. window when you're losing, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes it might even make you stronger. You never know. There's several ways to approach it, I guess. I mean, you see Look that... Look at Fly and No Tell. Uh -huh. Th that is the story that every Dota player wants, you know. Uh, hopefully, they, if they can keep S4, I think they will always be a contender at everything they go to now. Oh, Paytos going for that skewer back. Pity is not under tower range. He did go, you know, no points into that power just yet. He's having a somewhat decent lane here. He's got 4 CS compared to the Bat, who is still 0-0, zero and zero, who would just have picked up his first CS in. Yeah, this... It's very, very hard. Like, you can see the middle. It's so highly contested. And this is why, you know, you can see what these... Yeah, like, even for... You call them, like, Tier 2 European teams. I'm still impressed by how much more mechanically disciplined like disciplined they are compared to the Warriors gaming game series. I don't know this for a fact, but like I, I feel like the EU teams and NA teams and probably Chinese tier two teams probably sit a bit higher 
than most other regions. I mean, I know I literally listed three of the regions, but I don't know much about SCA, but you know, tier two teams. Uh, they're tier two because they don't have like the LAN experience and they don't have the big, big game experience. And they'll lose in situations they're not used to, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, they play as a team, they've got the mechanical skill for the most part. Sometimes it's just like lack of discipline or lack of um, foresight in a game. The mechanical skill only gets you so far, but I mean, it's interesting to see how, like, at least after ever since TI6, you start to see like some teams to start to do this region hunt where they start to trade players. You know, it was the beginning I wish of that happened ages ago. ago. Yeah, same. Like cross regions is it's so good. It is. Scene. This is like, uh, I, I don't especially know. Especially now there's more money in the scene, and mm -hmm. you can afford the team houses and stuff, and you can afford to fly the players just across like an ocean. Yeah, I just feel like it's it's really really useful in the sense where, you know, you you, you start to see the merge of playstyles across cultures, across the regions, which can really benefit just Dota's game in general. Just like letting the players for them to experience more, to learn new things, maybe some things you never saw before, even the way certain heroes played. I mean there's only so many there's only so much time in a day where you can watch so much Dota and sometimes you don't get to see everything. Unless Yeah and if you're playing you're not watching it so Alright, so see, let's talk about CS. You know, Sven, he's having great CS, top of the chart. 26 to 11, he's had great farm over in this bottom lane. I mean, the Magnus can't really touch him. Magnus no, is in. Magnus is just there to soak up. Can't really pressure him. Whereas, you know, this Batrider, you know, he wants to be doing more, but. hasn't had the star. They are looking, they're thinking yeah. about maybe going to Silencer, perhaps? They don't have the vision on it, no? Bash? Or well, the dream would be to bash him into that cliff on the left. They have a charge. They could think about going for Lisas. Lesage? Lesage? But Pwn. I have no idea how you say it. Kakor. Charge? He is looking for the I angle. Think it's Kaso. Regeneration. Dang. I, I don't know, man. I don't. Okay, but you know, at least for the Kinguin side, where are these guys from again? Uh, I think it's Poland. Poland. I could be wrong on that. Okay. S somewhere, uh, Serbia, somewhere around there, I believe, is where most of them come from. Okay. Oh, they do get a stun into the Spirit Breaker with the last word and the Curse of the Silent. They're gonna try and get some damage out onto him, but he's just really, really tanky with the boots and the Stout Shield. All right, charging Rush. away. Oh. Oh. Fee oh fee feels Time bad, man. Call it. Feels no, bad, I mean, man. When at least that happens when it means very little in the game, you know, all your bad RNG is now gone and you can just concentrate on getting bashes. Maybe it's a sacrifice, you know? You sacrifice to Roche, the first hit bash god, and then uh, you get more first hit bashes. Is that the play? Dude, are we are we doing the roll swap thing now? Is this where you could become a Mimi and I become a old Tilty? Is this, is this what's going on? I don't know, dude. I think I've tilted out. Oh, already they get today, they get the stun know. with the last one. Might even get the Battle Rider kill with the Spike Carapace. Not enough damage still. Of course, they can try for a turnaround. Oh, telekinesis onto the creep instead. They do get the stun into the Troll Warlord, but Spirit Breaker only bringing him down to half HP. Oh dear, be careful, Rubik. And they go back to the shrine. Man, this is very, very intense. Like, both teams, they've basically been trading spells around, but no one's really dying just yet. You know, it's, it's really interesting. Like, after 6 minutes and 40 seconds in, like, usually by now, you would have expected at least first blood to happen. I mean, considering... Yeah, especially with Spirit Breaker. Yeah. We did kind of see one but death, but that was, you know, from Roshan. If you look at Stunt. how this game's going overall, mm -hmm. just look at this TA. She has been forced to jungle at 5 minutes into the game. They have a lift. They don't want to use it just yet. And Jiaang, well... I don't know, I feel like it's, re it's a really hard game because at the same time the Silencer did quite nicely and messing around with him. But Rod, over in the top lane, you know, Exotic Deer, he can't walk into the Firefly, almost gets burned down. The Curse of the Silent might, it might be enough to take this Bat Rider down. I think Lisa H might be able to secure the first blood of this game. He has enough damage. But that's if he can chase the Bat Rider down, of course. 
Yep, just needs vision. Juke into the trees, juke out of the trees. Silencer looking for him. Like that long lost Dyer's lover, which he's never gonna get. And alright, Bad Rider actually gets away to safety. Going for the deny as well. Everyone's just dying. To creeps and Roshan. Yeah. We're a few patches late. Right, look at this juicy stack. Ben's gonna love that. Oh. He's got his level 7. Mine. Just go for it right now. Yep, that's a quad oh, stack. Any oh, feels good. Can you feel that? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm sure that uh, he doesn't need the regen. So just pop yourself. Go, go, go. Go ham. Get the slot. He just got like 400 gold from that. Feels really nice. Middle lane, you know, they're still pressuring this TA really hard. Net worth wise, she's starting to break into the top half, but this OD is having the lane of his life. Spearbreaker now charging in. They have Hajaldo on the Invis rune. Okay, hello, they're showing. Ooh, that Sanity's Eclipse destroys Pwn. And Nisha now on the run, but here comes Keso and help. With the last word and the Rubik, he's gonna stay in for the couple of hits. With the battle trance, they will take out Hajalad. 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 Your guess is as good as mine, dude. Oh, he's going in. Spirit Breaker Gaming. Do it. Just do it. Oof. Well, that's our first charge kill. That's something. This guy's a man, you know, he, he won't back down. Now using the lasso on the top lane, he's trying for the solo kill here onto Exotic Deer but won't actually get the kill. And Kaysaw has come to the top lane using the Carapace to slow him down Exotic Deer. Do they actually want to chase this? That's the question. They have the face boots and the Whirling Axis but I don't think they have enough damage. The ranged Whirling Axis will connect but Hajad is there. So no way. No way to pursue the, ki no way to pursue the kill. But Pwn, he's charging to the top lane. Angry Spirit Car. Who is he charging? Going into Exotic Deer. They have the lift. Tossing all the way back, they have the Carapace as well. Oh dear, the, tele the Fade Vault's gonna actually get soaked up by the no Carapace. RP. No RP, yes, but there, we know we did get a nice skewer. If they can only find the stun. Ah, no. The, the He's not shocker. risking the rush this time, you know? He didn't <laughs> want to do it. He doesn't want to take down. the risk, man. If, if he gets bashed by Rosh again and dies in there. He would have lived this time, though, and he could have stole the haste room. So. Unless he gets bashed twice. I mean, you've seen those Reddit clips, right? Yeah, cooldown, so. We've seen dumber shit happen before, dude. But okay. That's true, that's true. The irony of the 17% hero getting 17%ed would be glorious, so. And everyone would rejoice, I'm sure. I would. I know I would. But okay. I'd be very happy to oh, see that. Look at this poor Rubik, man. You know, it comes to Bash. They want to turn around for this. They have no lasso. But okay, already using the imprisonment. They have Keso on the way. Nisha, the Mel Strike's actually not gonna be enough damage. He does get the Rubik kill still. Impale. Rod still on the hunt. Popping the one charges they have. Oh, nice Astral. Looking for the Carapace. Even popping the, sh uh, the Shrine preemptively. It will not be enough to heal him up. But Mo actually getting a solo kill bottom as well. And this is just a huge mess as we see. Basically a one for one trade, I believe. No, okay, yeah. it was a two for one. No, actually. two for one. Two for one. Mo and Pwn getting themselves a kill and Nisha getting one. So, okay, now you can start to see the aggression start to slowly pile up. And Tau deny. So, Paytos getting a pretty decent, a pretty decent start. Yeah, I mean, he's sitting even with the TA. So, everything that goes right for the Radiant side is going to come with the collateral of the are they actually going to be able to use their network? Right now, all three of the cores on Kingwin are doing well. You know, like the troll could be doing a tiny bit better, but once he starts getting empowered and gets a few minutes in the jungle, he'll be able to catch up. And the mag's halfway to his blink, going super efficient with his items, you know, skipping the arcanes, unless he buys them now. Just because Sol Ring's a pretty good item, you know? Mm hmm. And no, they decide to give it's the new rune. thing. They're giving the rune to the next assassin. They want him to get a quicker level six. Sven is hiding under his yeah, tier one tower. This is a really good thing. Did they beat. use the tomb yet? Uh, I guess they did, because it would be really bad if they didn't. But, uh, it, it just feels like they're both so low. I can't really tell, but maybe. Okay, so they're gonna start pressuring the tier one a bit. They leave the top lane. Trolls taken to the ancients with their power. Yeah, this smoke is so weird. 
I mean, they're hoping for someone like, to defend the top tier one, right? Uh, they're hoping that the troll sits up there and plays, you know, like SEA player would, and uh, sit in the lane and farm while his team makes a play bottom. Instead, he does the right thing by, like, you know, going to the safe area from that. Oh, dude, while that's his team pushes. Why you gotta be so savage? I mean, this guy, you know, he, not so safe. Another strike on the middle lane. Magnus. No way to get out this. He pops the RP traps too. With the curse of the silent and the last word, they're going straight into the spirit breaker. Do they have the carrier piss? Not gonna use it. He knows the Hajad is inside the trees. Impale's gonna be up on Mark. It's not gonna stop him. Lisa Hitch gets himself a plus two. And they still have the global silence. He's gonna pick up his tranquil boots. And Kingwin are looking quite good. Like five to four, you know, at least to get a good trade. Magnus died, but still. Dagger's still gonna come in a reasonable time. Yeah, at least they got a turn kill off that. I mean, using his RP before he has blink off is not that big of a deal, so if he can get that in the next two minutes when his RP cools down, they can go make a play again. And meanwhile, you know, the, the troll and TA are kind of just trading farm. Meanwhile, Rubik the looking troll for has level 6. Vlad's sustain is pretty good. The Vlad's this game, yeah. yeah. Rubik, I can see the appeal behind it as well. You know, it's great with... All these heroes. I'm just waiting for the blink the dagger to see, well. yeah, to see the big, you know, the big Magnus plays. And he said this game there's definitely potential for some big Mag plays because of how close the Sven and TA will be, just with like lack of range. But we'll see how uh, they need to do it. it. Might just be single hero RPs and uh, go from there because they have a lot of damage between the two other cores. You know, if you get one kill, you can snowball a fight pretty easily. Alright, so... Magna's gonna get his dagger after maybe next creep wave and a half. Jiang, still quite far from his own dagger as well. Like, TA going for a dagger, is this not a Deso kind of game? Or do you, you really feel like you need the dagger more? Um... Personally, I always like Deso when you can use it to speed up your farm and access like the Ancients quicker and stuff, but Sven's kind of doing that for you, so you probably want the Blink to play with your Ooh, power rider. Carapist, Global Impale is going to be there with the Sanity's Eclipse dropped as well. They will kill off Mo. With you. That's a really, really good kill. Poor Sven, yeah, that's a big kill as well. And Tiang is going to have, won't even have money for his Blink. He's going to TP straight to the top half of the map. Perhaps they think about diving to tier 1, but the Rubik's immediately dodged and moved to the western part of the map. And Pwn's just leeching off EXP in this top part, you know? Happy. Try to complete a blade mail. Paytos yep. just got his blink. So did the bat and the TA, so now they can maybe start making some plays with the two supports. Almost like a game of patience right now as well. Like, who's gonna use the blinks first? You have to suspect that the Magnus has a blink dagger. And tier 1 tower is gonna fall. So Kingwin. Waiting, Ideally, waiting, waiting to charge. To counter initiate. Oh, Carapace. Nope, he cancels it just at the last minute. It's okay. Manana going yeah, for the like, last hole, they really find the OD. Where's the RP? Catching three! And okay, with the whirling axes, that'll be one down to make it a second tier to follow. And here comes the God Strength. Can he right click anyone down? No whirling axes. Nisha should be dying to the nether strike. Impale's gonna be off the mark. Nisha actually gets the kill. Three heroes dead. Now nah, Sven's gonna cleave right through the Nyx Assassin. It's gonna be a three for one trade. Uh, Chalk's just going into Rush with DD and Empower. This is probably not a play that expect either, so. This will be pretty quick. Yeah, you definitely yeah, wouldn't have seen that coming. Uh, Roche, this game is extremely important for the TA or the Sven, one of the two. And the same kind of idea for the troll, right? It just lets you play so in their face with no fear. And that's kind of what these heroes are about. So at first stage, this might not be the biggest deal. We'll see if they manage to get like another free hero RP and they can maybe turn that into a tier two, depending where they take the fight. But otherwise, it, it might just be, you know, a few back and forth fights and farming. Because, you know, it's only 17 minutes. It's not a time to go just yet. Give it another 10, 20, and then, then we'll see. But, you know, this is ballsy. Smoking up in up a hill into a shrine. They probably know it's on cooldown, but, you know, the other team has Aegis. And, you no, know, no, the vendetta also breaks the smoke. Where there's no detection. <laughs> That's a really bad... Yeah, no one on their team has detection and they're smoking. Oh, look at Kingwin. They are, they are smoking. Though. XD. More blinking up. The wild Skewer? blink. 
He doesn't want to take the risk. But oh, Nick's assassin. Silent, so. He's got so much info. Damn, and now he's gonna pop the global silence. Here comes OD stealing all that intel, making him really, really dumb to demolish it. Just tear apart that TA. The carapace is gonna gonna be there. It stops pwn in his tracks, and he's gonna get pwned by Nisha. So Nisha with the dog, you know, getting himself another big kill. Two going the way of Kingwin, and this is going to open up the top tier one. It looks like they're just the better team at the moment. Like the plays they're making are, are smoother. I don't even necessarily think it's got anything to do with the draft, despite the fact that they made the TA lane really, really hard. Like the, the way they're moving their heroes is just so much quicker, and it's paying off. Like this Nyx guy is doing so much this game. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I have to admit, I've been He's very, very impressed. Alright, so they're gonna go for the tier 2 tower straight away And very little that LGB can do uh, They can try and split, but you know, this is what the next They are best charging the silencer up. But the TPs immediately come in Looks like there was a carapace in the middle lane But they have they had a sentry there So he immediately got out Looks like he's still looking for the impale play It's gonna land, whirling axes to follow Can we get a lucky bash in, sir? And alright, yes we do Plus 2 going the way of Lisa H And as it is, you know, Spirit Breaker doesn't have a high mana pool Oh, they screw it back. They find the Rubik, but the double impale stolen from the Rubik. Triple Actually, no, triple. Wow. Doesn't seem it's like it's going to stop the tier two. Yeah, it's a triple. And the tower's going to die. Woohoo. <laughs> uh, Piki, you can't say you're tilted by this. You have to be happy now that we're casting some good European Dota. Oh, I mean, this is kind of a stomp, but you know. An exotic tier, you know, Sanchi and Yasha, Vladimir's offering, BKB on the way. With the BKB, I'm pretty sure they have the tools to go high ground. And on top of that, you know, this OD is just fat. He's got a Hurricane Pike, he's got a Midas, he's gonna go for a Blink Dagger before like 25 minutes in. He's really, really farmed. And now that Global is off cooldown again, the next time LGB initiate into, K into Kingwin, they're just. I feel like it's really, really hard for them because they will have to deal with the RP. So this is where I feel yep. Magnus at the yeah, back. Actually want to clump. Yeah, so the, the, just, just, it's just a psychological threat of having the Magnus there. Like, you want to jump, but you know he's going to cancel with a quick skewer. He doesn't even need to use the RP all the time, you know what I mean? Yep, and like, their way of initiating the majority of fights is going to be Batrider blinking in. He doesn't have a force yet, it's 20 minutes in, you know, his farm is like, non-existent. Which is partly down to the TA and Sen thing. But, hey ho. Anyway, like, he, he'll blink in, lasso so on, force them out when he actually gets his force. And then Sven and TA are gonna come on Lasso, the global, Spirit Breaker, thinking about going straight for Lisa, but immediate skewer back from Petos. And look at all the hits, stealing all that lovely, lovely intel, whirling axis, Impale's gonna be there, but point RP only on the Rubik, so okay, they do get only one That's kill. That's kill. So two heroes More down. Steal all the Rubik's in, boys. What's he down to now? I can't quite see because of the buyback thingy. Oh, that's rude. 38? Is yeah, that right? Yeah, yeah 38, 38. So Science has got 22. Mm -hmm. Feels good. Oh, trying for another skewer yeah, play. They still have ages for uh, a few seconds. They can take this tower. Yeah. Alright, so... Tier 3 tower is taking quite a few hits. Stormbolt Hammer flies out, but KGN, you know, they're happy. They've used the Curse of the Silent. If they can get it onto Moe, you cancel his blink. You know, I'm, I think Exotic Deer is okay to lose the Aegis, but like you said, it's gonna expire in a few seconds and they don't want to take that risk. There we go. Yeah, so he just doesn't want to die when it's about to expire. Mm -hmm. So, this is them making the very safe play, you know? They can continue to farm, get the BKB on Troll, get OD's. Uh, next item as well if they want and play for the next Aegis. But sure, Sven and TA are very, very good late game heroes and they have the potential to come back, but it's easy to come back if you just like run at them and make a mistake. You know, you can still play with control of the map. And you know, look at these smokes. They still have no detection. At all. They, this guy can just walk wherever the hell he wants. Kesaw has been really on point. Like so far, the way he he's been reading the game, it's like he's been reading, you know, predicting LGB's movements inside out. He's always remained three steps ahead of them. 
Like even when they put the sentry down early, like a bit, I think like four minutes ago, he read the situation so well. He played on the outskirts of where he expected the sentry to be. They take the tier two tower. Map control is just disappearing. For LGB and Kingwin are doing extremely well. Fourteen to five, nine thousand gold lead at twenty-two minutes in. The BKB coming up on exotic gear. I think this is the final nail in the coffin for them. The creep they spot out. Okay, they spot out an assassin, so they know where he's headed. Do they want to try and set up for this? Is this the ultimate bait? I don't think there's much to bait for, unless they, they come for like a looking for a stun maybe, Impale's gonna be off the mark as the Spirit Breaker actually gets out. Hajar Delo as well is also gonna fly back out. And Kenguin, now they can just proceed to take themselves maybe a top tier 3? Or do they just wanna just like, push the, yeah they just wanna push the waves out. Yeah I think they just wanted to kill, and the TA is in a really good position to make this not amount to anything and you know the back can do the same thing if they start going down mid he can just go like this and cut the wave so they can store the game out and you know Sven is one of the best heroes to have as a core you'd yeah. ideally like him to be fatter than Ooh. every other hero on the map but really aggressive blink from Nisha An exotic dude sure sure confident they are Poking away onto the tier 3 already at 24 minutes in And the tier 3 tower will fall, they're happy to back off? No, they decide, let's just, screw, let's just screw it, let's just go straight for the melee barracks What can they do? They have to consider who to initiate on And melee no, barracks no, will go down If they jump, they lose the fight, they have to find this hero Stormbot Hammer, the Carapace Nyx Assassin, once again, Kaesaw He's been impressing so m much on this Nyx Assassin And they're gonna get a full lane of barracks for absolutely nothing So before the TA even got to this power spike like, they don't even care, they're just taking on the intel. And they're, they're still hanging around, they will just go back for the shrine. BKB already up on this troll roller, but he's not buying it just yet. Looks like he's going for a defusal blade instead. He's feeling confident enough that he doesn't even need to go for a BKB. This is this is some really sick stuff. And I think he realized as well that the BKB, there's not much which he needs to shield himself from. No, it's mostly just the Batrider and Rubik, so... You, you have OD if you're getting locked down in a stun to save you, have Magnus to counter initiate and you also have this overwhelming amount of damage you get from Diffusal plus uh, Empower once he actually gets it and the chicken is no longer in use. I like the Diffusal Blade pickup a lot more now that I think about it because it's great against Sven, you know when he pops God Strength it's easier to kite him around with the Purge. Or you know you just man fight him, take his war cry off and bash him. That's tr that's true. All right. So this is a a really really important play. The uh, king we should not let happen. Mm -hmm. And everyone's TPing in. They use the carapace as well. They want to kill this next assassin, but I think he's okay to die. It slows down the rush timing, and just by doing that, I think it's a great sacrificial play. I mean, I could just be overhyping this. He back as well if he needs to. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, new god strength, half his duration already gone. Kingwin can just wait things out. If they have another smoke, they could actually think about going back in. Yeah, and they also have this lane pushing in bottom, so it's going to give them... Oh, they're going to go for it anyways. Yeah, now the buyback comes out. Where's the RP? They're just ignoring the Sven, who's completely isolated by Exotic Deer. He's dead for a whole minute. No buyback. And of course, with the Sanity's Eclipse, down goes Bad Rider. This should be GG for game one. Three heroes dead, all with no buyback. Now the RP going to be used. He can't even get to the shrine. Tiang is headed. They've been beaten, they've been battered. Four dead and 18 to 6 at 26 minutes in. Like you said, PQ, Kingwin are stomping LGB. Yeah, I think it's a different class of team. Maybe you can knock this up as some kind of draft win and uh, they come up with something better in game two. But from what I see, they just. They got out, outclassed straight up. Indeed, but okay, so that was only game one of this game, you know, best of three series. I've been, I've been pretty impressed by Kingwin so far. I mean, I'm not sure whether they'll go with a similar kind of draft, but what are you hoping to see in game two? Uh, to be honest, when I've seen them in the past, Mag has been one of their better heroes, so I'll probably see that get drafted. And then, uh, they're flexible as well, from what I recall. But they do kind of like that kind of style of play, I think, more so than uh, the current meta, where it's Necro, Venno, Lich, 
I mean, I'll be interested to see the draft because I haven't seen these this, these guys play in a long time. So see okay. what they prioritize. All right, all right. So um, the lobby's up, but it's under uh, all pick because you know admin. No problem. We'll take a quick break, guys. So we'll see you guys for our next game of this best of three series of the ESL Hamburg EU qualifier. I'm Hades. This is PQMC. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 